Hello everyone! I just finished filming tomorrow's video, hence the makeup and the uh, sun that I've clearly brought into my sewing room with these new light bulbs. <laughs> Okay, so it is Thursday today. I did not vlog at all yesterday, mostly because I went and picked up a sewing machine that I was having serviced. Um, so yesterday involved, um, what else did I do yesterday? That's pretty, I had a doctor's appointment in the morning um, that I went to, and then I went and picked up my friend Evelyn, and we went to a town that's about 45 minutes north of us um, to pick up sewing machine that I had dropped off before the whole stay at home, before COVID really hit. Um, so he's had it for quite a while, but I want to show it to you because this was a free sewing machine that I got from my aunt. Um, so it was, I, I've talked a little bit about it. It used to sit on the floor a little bit. It was just time to finally get it working. So it's an old singer, and I'll show it to you here in a second, but an old singer and my aunt, uh, let's see, probably last fall, her church was having a garage sale, like a church-wide garage sale fundraiser. And there, well, she had told me at the first that there were two featherweights that were um, donated for the church garage sale. One of them sold, but this one didn't, and did I want it? Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, a featherweight? Yes, like I'll take it. Now, it's not a featherweight, but um, she just wasn't familiar with the type because it weighs like 800 pounds. <laughs> It's not a featherweight, <laughs> but it is a, let's see, my sewing machine repair guy, I'm not sure exactly what type of singer is, I just haven't done the um, research on it. I don't have any material, like any um, um, manuals or anything that goes with it. I do have the original case, which is a wooden case. Now it doesn't work, uh, it doesn't latch really well, um, but I do still have the case and I, you know, I'll just set the case on top of it um, when it's not in use. But he said it is a three quarter head um, sewing machine, so it's not a full size sewing machine. Um, anyway, it completely, I mean, not only did it not, I mean, it didn't even move, it was completely locked up and um, it had the really, really old cords, and I'll show you those, he gave those to me again. So he rewired it for me, he got, he, everything soaked for a really long time because he was closed for seven weeks um, with all of the shutdown stuff, and um, it is sewing like a dream now. It is so cool. So I'm going to take you guys over and show you and turn off these lights. They're really drying my eyes off, um, drying my eyes out. And uh, yeah, let's go over and take a look real quick. Okay, seriously, my new lights are like the sunshine. My I'm like seeing stars. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Here's the machine. Um, this is the, I'll show you, this is the wood uh, case that came with it. Um, but it just doesn't latch because I think this is the issue. Well, I'm not sure what the issue is. I don't know. You might be able to fix something on here. It just doesn't latch right now. I might be able to have someone else look at this. Um, this is just not his forte. Anyway, it's a nice, beautiful wooden case. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's really pretty. It's just, I mean, just the craftsmanship on these old machines is just amazing. Okay, so here she is. So again, he said it's a three-quarter size, not a full size. This is the old um, cord that he, no, sorry. Oh, hold on. It's sitting on it. Hold on. Okay, so this is the old cord, which was so beyond done. I mean, it was like totally frayed here in the middle. Um, it was, it was done. But he let me keep it because he said a lot of people, you know, with the older machines like to keep all the parts. So I do still have it. But um, he put, he rewired it for me, so I have a new safe plug. Um, the foot pedal is actually in here, so you run it with the, uh, the knee bar. It runs, it sews for you, um, which I've actually never used one of those. I've had the knee bar to like raise, lower and raise the presser foot, but never um, to actually do the sewing. I take that back. My singer that's in the sewing table uses a knee pedal. I've just not used that machine since I've had it refurbished, so shame on me. Um, anyway, he got um, everything working again. Look at the beautiful stitching that it does now. I mean, let me see if that will focus. No, it's not wanting to focus. Too close. Um, it's just sewing beautifully. Um, it's just such a gorgeous machine. So I'm so very excited. I've just set it here at the end of the line of my sewing machines. I'm really interested in doing a button-up shirt. I have heard a lot of people love to use uh, vintage machines for things like that, where you're doing just a lot of straight stitching. Um, 
I mean, I can, I, I'm just, I just want to use it and see um, how it is and what it's like. And he gave me a whole bunch more bobbins that go with this machine or that will fit with this machine. Um, I'm just really excited about it. Isn't it pretty? And it was, I mean, free. I mean, I paid, obviously paid uh, money to have it refurbished, but it was under $100 to have it completely fixed again. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited about this. And I just feel like, I don't know, it's a piece of sewing history, and I think that that needs to be preserved, um, especially, well, here, let me turn you around. I can talk sappy here in a second. Okay, sorry, I've got everything set up to do more filming here in a little bit. Look at the difference between the lights not being on, though. Um, my eyeballs need a break. So here's the thing about sewing machines, and it's totally sappy, and I normally do not put, um, like, I'm not very sentimental with things, really. Um, you know, a couple of old family photos, maybe a little piece of jewelry of my grandmother's here and there, but for the most part, I'm very not very sentimental. I've not very sentimental. Like, I um, am much more apt to purge and get rid of things um, than to, to hold on to things. Um, my daughter is like that. My son is not. He is very sentimental with objects. But for some reason, there is something about a sewing machine. So if I'm at a garage sale, flea market, estate sale, whatever, and you see a sewing machine, there's something that's really sad. I don't know. It's almost like seeing a puppy. <laughs> it's just something that just really tugs at my heartstrings. And I think that what it is, I've really, you know, gone introspectively here and tried to di to dissect what it is about that. But I think what it is, is that the sewing machine is kind of, um, or sewing in particular, but you know, the sewing machine since its invention is kind of a thread, especially, you know, if you're looking a um, hundred years ago, even 50 years ago, um, 60 years ago, but it's like a common thread that connects women, basically. I know men use it too, you know, tailors and that kind of stuff. Um, but there's just something, there, I don't know, because it was such a household thing when, um, you know, women were typically the ones that made all the clothes for their household, that made, um, you know, it was just part of, you know, like a, like a vacuum cleaner today, but, you know, it was part of the household, um, but a very important part of the household and a very important craft, obviously, because that's what would clothe your family. Um, so there's just something, you know, and then obviously it morphed a little bit more as a creative, um, I'm sure it was, I mean, it's always been creative, but just definitely, you know, as ready to wear became more prevalent and people were sewing less and less for their families, then it was more of a machine of either recreating things you couldn't afford, um, you know, cause there was definitely a time where sewing your own clothes was much cheaper than buying ready to wear. That's not really the case now, but there was definitely a time where that was the case. So being able to create designer garments, um, for yourself that you maybe wouldn't have otherwise been able to afford, um, to be able to express yourself and then just the craft of creating and making something with your hands. I just feel a connection to the generations that came before me. And there's something about a sewing machine that just kind of holds on to that. So when I see one there, it just makes me sad because so many people have given up the craft. I mean, it's definitely having a resurgence. I feel like now a lot more people, especially since the stay at home order, my sewing machine guy said that he has been, he has been busier since they reopened um, at the beginning of May. He was allowed to reopen at the beginning of May um, than ever. Like, and he's been in business for, you know, 40 years or whatever, but he said that he's never been as busy <laughs> as he's been because people are unearthing sewing machines out of closets and everything else, which makes me so happy um, that that's the case that people are getting back into sewing because it's such a wonderful, wonderful hobby um, and creative, um, creative art. But uh, yeah, there's just something about sewing machines that are kind of you know, left to be sold for just a few dollars or whatever. I mean, I can't adopt all the sewing machines, but I do like being able to own a little bit of that history and feel kind of the connection, even though I have no idea who owned that sewing machine before me. I have no idea, but there's still a connection to whoever that was, most likely a woman, um, not necessarily, but there is a connection to all the people. Um, and this goes across all aspects of life, you know? Um, different socioeconomic staff, status, races, it, none of that matters. You know, the sewing machine went through all of them. Um, a lot of people, especially, you know, maybe not so much now, but um, yeah, there's just like a connection, a thread that's there um, with the sewing machine. And that is super sappy. <laughs> but I do, I just feel like, yeah, there's just something really lovely about having that machine working again and getting it all fixed up. Um, 
yeah, so that it can be used for generations to come. And if as long as it's taken care of properly and oiled and all that stuff, that it should run like a dream for years and years and years and years to come. I mean, there's not a single piece of plastic on that machine. It is 100% metal and it weighs 800 pounds, but, <laughs> but it is, yeah, just a workhorse and still does a beautiful stitch. Um, anyway, that's all of my thoughts. That's a lot of babbling on my feelings on sewing machines. <laughs> But I know I'm not alone. You're the people that I can talk to about that. Um, I know that that is not just for me. Um, you know, yeah, we all kind of feel the same way about fabric patterns, sewing machines, all that kind of stuff. But yes, that is uh, my new acquisition, and I went and picked that up yesterday. So I was gone like, quite a bit yesterday. That was a long story just to say why I didn't film yesterday, but that's why. <laughs> I tell you, I was also wearing yesterday, which I'm kind of sad I didn't pop on at least to say hi, because I was wearing my uh, new, let's see, my Butterick 6543, which I wore my linen one on Tuesday, and then I wore my cotton uh, wall, my the print, the mustard that has the flowers on it from that sew along. I wore that yesterday. Number one, I love that pattern so much. I loved wearing that dress, both versions, um, both days. Uh, they were just cool and wonderful and just so comfortable. But number two, I got so many compliments yesterday on that dress. So many compliments. And I wasn't like I was way out and about. Um, I love that dress. <laughs> it's just a really good one. So anyway, um, there probably isn't going to be much more today on the vlog, only because um, I just filmed tomorrow's video and then I've got to film this sew along. Um, and then I've got to do a lot of editing. Um, we are going to go on some friends' boats to, uh, boat tomorrow night um, for kind of a, a dinner. It's another family. Um, they own a boat, and so it's kind of nice in the evening. We're um, going to get together and everyone bring their own dinner and eat it on the boat while we're out, and the kids can tube and that kind of stuff. And then on uh, Saturday, my son has his first soccer game. This is the first one he's had since the fall. Now, they did do scrimmages and stuff in winter training um, from January all the way through when they had to stop for um, COVID uh, in March. But this is yeah, his first game. So um, he's very excited. So that's Saturday morning. It's going to be beastly hot. Thankfully, the game's at 9, but still, I think it's going to be stupid hot at 9 o'clock. And then after that, we're going to travel down to another family of friends who have a lake house. And um, they invited us down just for the afternoon, basically. It's like an hour, hour and 15 minute drive from here. So we're going to go down and, um, yeah, do some swimming off their dock and um, some paddle boarding and kayaking and that kind of stuff. And then um, head back Saturday night. So because of that, I'm going to be exhausted, number one, because I'm not used to being so social. <laughs> But because of that, I need to get a lot of editing done today so that um, that can all go up. And I have a pattern test that I still need to get sewn up. Um, but my hope is I'll probably come in and say, hey, a little bit, um, especially probably tomorrow, because um, I will be down here working, but it'll probably be things you can't see yet. So um, definitely Monday and Tuesday, well, probably Sunday too, I'll be back to sewing some more active wear. So uh, yeah, that's what I have planned for right now. Um, so yeah, doing a lot of filming today, just nothing you can see quite yet. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you go for now. If I don't see you again this evening, I will see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Sunday morning, everyone. It is um, June 21st, it's the summer solstice, solstice today. Um, so yeah, I have not vlogged since Thursday, I don't think. Come on, they wanna see you. Had a lot of requests for this little sweetness. Yes, a lot of requests for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I haven't vlogged since Thursday. Uh, Friday, I spent the day um, doing that pattern test that I needed to do. Um, and what else? I had a really busy day Friday. <laughs> doing that, I was doing some editing, quite a bit of editing. Um, what else? Oh, I, f I had to film the um, cutting table parts of the sew along that went up today. Um, that all still had to happen. And yeah, and then edit all of that. And then we went to um, some of our friends have a boat that's about, um, there's a lake like 20 minutes away from us um, up north. And so they invited us to their boat a Friday evening. And so I had to get like you know, because everyone brought their own dinners, you know, so that we weren't sharing food and all that kind of stuff. It's just another family with kids that are 
um, bracket my kids. So they have a son and a daughter as well. One is a year, almost exactly a year older than my twins, and the other is exactly a year younger than my twins. So the four of them get along really, really well. So I had to like figure all of that out because we had to meet at their boat at like five in the evening. So getting food and all that stuff um, figured. So anyway, I did not vlog on Friday. Um, I was filming and that kind of stuff and editing, but I did not vlog. And then um, yesterday we had our first soccer game um, since all of this craziness happened. And he played very, very well, and uh, it was it was an interesting thing. You know, all the parents are socially distanced on the sidelines, um, so not being able to really talk to any of the parents was kind of crazy. But um, anyway, you know, you can kind of talk, but from afar. Um, anyway, and then after that, another good set of friends of ours have a lake house, like an hour and 15 minutes south of the city. Um, and they've been down there all weekend and they just invited us down for the day. So after that we um, had lunch and then we headed down there and spent the day um, basically just swimming in their lake behind the house. Um, and then we had outdoor dinner down there. Um, you know, we really were only going in their house to use the restroom and then also to change from swimsuits and then back to dry clothes. Um, and then just when we got our meal and then everyone was outside the whole rest of the time in the water. So it was a really good, um, it was a really good way to socialize, I think, during this time. And, you know, my kids really needed it. They've got, um, kids my kids age as well. So, um, yeah, they just, my kids needed to socialize. My husband and I needed to socialize. And yeah, it was just a really, really good day. So, um, this morning we had church and it's Father's Day here in the U.S. So, um, We've been celebrating him so far this morning, and my son was invited to play with another team today. Um, he plays travel soccer. I don't know if I've mentioned that or not. Maybe I'm sure I have, uh, but he was invited to play on a different team, mostly because the soccer season is now kind of going a lot longer. I mean, all of the official stuff was canceled for the spring, but they are playing friendly games, um, and so... A lot of the teams, though, are short numbers because kids are traveling or, you know, just have other obligations um, in the summer because it was never supposed to be going this far into the summer. So anyway, um, a lot of uh, player passing and all that kind of stuff, just just a chance to play soccer. So he was in uh, mass to play on another team today um, to help get numbers, and he is all about that. Bless his heart. He's been wanting to get out there and play soccer ever since March. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> we have that today. I need to do some filming on the swimsuit sew along because I really don't want to sew anything else until that's done because all of my machines are set up for it. So I've just kind of been playing around with my lights since I'll be doing a majority of the sew along on my serger and then a little bit on the home machine because um, I, I like to use some the zigzag stitch for uh, my swimsuits. I'm trying to determine the best lighting setup. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, obviously, I can't take you along on that sewing. You'll just have to see that in the um, sew along that's going up. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying that so far. Week one just went up today. Um, and I also need to decide what I'm going to do. I have a lot of things in the works right now for stuff for the channel. But trying to determine, like, what needs to happen when. Um, so I need to, to kind of figure out what I want to go up on Tuesday. Because I will need to get something filmed for that. Uh, tomorrow and also figure out my grocery list so anyway <laughs> and just plan out my week um, so yeah that's kind of what I have going on today nothing real exciting um, just yeah and also just kind of recharging a little bit only because we were with um, we just socialized a lot more this weekend than we have in a really long time <laughs> so that's be tiring um, but yeah just gonna do today's a recharge day I may film some parts of the sew along um, for the swimsuit um, so that that I can get ahead of the game on that and then just focus on my um, uh, sewing throughout the week because I would like to switch back over to activewear sewing um, tomorrow on the vlog because uh, I did promise that I would show you some more cover stitch footage and then also um, I had promised some um, showing you how to use a sewing machine if you don't have access to a cover stitch or a serger. So um, I did want to do some of that this week. That may have to wait till Tuesday um, if I have to do some filming tomorrow. But yeah, I did want to show some of that for the weekly vlog this week. Okay, I think that's enough babble for now. <laughs> I am going to see if I can figure out my lights, get my countertops cleaned off a little bit so that I can do some sew-along filming. Okay, I will check back in with you all after a little bit. 
Okay, I'm back. It is evening time. It's like 7.45 now. Um, I finished the swimsuit so along. I just need to film all the intro videos. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a review of the pattern at the end of the very last sew along. Um, mostly because, and I say this in the intro, in the sew along, but um, it is really, you can't make muslins for swimsuits. The same way with bras. You have to just you have to just sew through them. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's a big four pattern. It is a Lisette pattern, and actually the pattern is fantastic. I'll talk more about it in the sew along. The pattern is a fantastic pattern, but fitting it, if you are larger busted, um, I graded between sizes on mine just to try and get the fit for my chest that I needed, but without doing a full bust adjustment, because full bust adjustments, it gets almost like bra, it's like bra adjustments. Um, when you're working with a swimsuit and um, that just it can get just really tricky and intense um, and a lot of times it really helps to have a second person and all that kind of stuff so if you are pretty much a straight size or I shouldn't say that you don't have to be a straight size but if you are a smaller cup size so like a BC um, or below this swimsuit is fantastic and will probably fit you great if you're bigger than that um, possibly there are better not possibly, there are, there are better swimsuit patterns out there that have the cup sizes already done um, that make fitting a ton easier. That being said, I don't hate the end, the swimsuit, the finished swimsuit, and um, I'd show you how to sew a bra into it, um, which isn't pretty on the inside, but it does help with um, kind of keeping things in place a little bit. <laughs> Gives you a little bit more uh, support um, than just the regular swimsuit, although there is kind of a built-in bra into the swimsuit a little bit. Um, anyway. So, um, yeah, so I'm a little, I'm not surprised necessarily, a little bummed, but, um, you know, it'll probably still get worn. It'll be a good, like, late swimsuit, um, but anyway, so, <laughs> but I do think, I mean, all of the tips and tricks that I show you, um, the whole swimsuit, and it's a well-drafted swimsuit, um, it's just the whole cup size thing is a bummer, but, um, I do, sh sh I mean, if you're sewing any swimsuit, hopefully all these tips and tricks will help you do, um, any swimsuit pattern. So, uh, yeah, that is the swimsuit sew along is completed. I just need to film the intros. I need to do some editing on the actual footage so then I can determine how many parts I want to break it up into and then I can get my intros filmed this week and then be done with the swimsuit sew along. Then we can move on to other things. Um, yeah, but now that I'm done sewing the swimsuit, um, I'm going to do some filming tomorrow. I need to film the video for Tuesday. Um, but I'm really hopeful that I can get some uh, active wear sewing done tomorrow. And then I'd like to show you guys, um, oh, in the swimsuit sew along, I do show you and tell, talk about how you can do all of this on the sewing machine as well. That you know, I actually use my sewing machine, the home sewing machine, quite a bit on this one. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of that in the, um, hopefully on Tuesday, if not Monday, um, and show you a little bit more how you can work with these um, active wear patterns and these active wear things. Uh, with the home sewing machine. Okay, that's all I've got for today, guys. <laughs> I'm going to call it a night. I'm super thirsty. I'm going to go drink a whole bunch of water um, right now. So I will, uh, yes, come back tomorrow. I don't know that I'll have a ton of sewing tomorrow because I am doing filming for the formal videos. But um, yeah, I'll definitely pop on and tell you what's going on and say hi and good morning and all that. All right, have a good evening. See you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. So today's last day of the vlog. I feel like this week's vlog's not gonna be nearly the length as long. Are you coming? Nearly the length of last week's vlog. There's Gidget. Gidget, can we say hello? Can we say hello? Well, I'll give you some footage of her in a, in a little bit. Um, okay, so today, so yesterday I didn't vlog at all because I was uh, filming. Um, uh, so let's see today's video and then also finishing up um, the sew along so I finished up like the intros and stuff like that um, got all of those well not all of them I'm all ready for Sunday I still have some more intros I need to film but I yeah um, but I also need to do some filming tomorrow because I need to get um, Tuesday's video is a sponsored video so um, next Tuesday and so um, I've got to get that filmed and edited and uh, submitted to them for approval to make sure that that looks good so um, I'm gonna do that tomorrow um, and then I was trying to think on Friday I really wanted to do a sew the look video for one of my ready to wear looks because um, I really want to enter that uh, contest that Lisa and Whitney are having oh sorry over on Instagram 
but I was looking through everything last night and um, it was like a cacophony of oopsies. So number one, I'm missing like, you know, one notion or whatever from almost all of the patterns that I'm waiting on for them to arrive. Like um, I've ordered them, but just waiting on them. Um, let's see, the Brie dress, I was gonna, that was the one I was going to do, which is that red um, wrap dress with like the pencil skirt. Um, I could have sworn, I mean, that I, I looked at that pattern, that it was a knit pattern and it is not <laughs> it's a woven pattern, which you could still use a Ponty knit on that. Um, but then I printed off all of the um, patterns on the um, copy shop video that I did and realized that I printed off the wrong stinking version that I wanted to do. <laughs> I printed off version A and I really want to do version B. Um, I think that looks most like the, um, um, oh good gracious, the inspiration picture. Um, I mean, I could print off, I mean, I'll, I'll probably make view A at some point, so it's not that big of a deal that I printed that one off, um, but I need view B, so I, um, I don't know, I guess I could probably print that off on the printer, uh, get that stuck together. Um, so then I was, you know, thinking, well, maybe I'll just wait and make that one once I've got all of my ducks in a row on that one. Um, cause I think I still may make it out of the Ponty. Um, it'd be very comfortable cause it's a fitted dress. So I think that would be very comfortable. I'm going to have to do a full bust adjustment on it, which isn't a shocking or a big deal. Um, but the bodice is lined. That's how you finish off all the edges on the bodice. So, um, I don't know what I'll use for my lining. I kind of like the idea of using something stretchy just to keep the whole thing comfortable, which I could. I still have some of that cotton modal that's in almost the same color. I could use that for the bodice lining. So anyway, that's where I am um, with that. So long story short, I was totally doing circles. You know when you get into that where you're forcing it, trying to force something. And I just said, okay, I'm just going to patiently wait until all of the notions for those patterns come. You know, I'm still waiting on fabric for three of the um, the looks that I had ordered from Minerva. And I know that they're experiencing delays, so I'm not even sure when those will get here. Um, so that left it down to five. Anyway, and then there was just like notions that I was waiting on for a few. Um, but one of them is that um, raspberry dress, the Coco Wawa raspberry dress that I'm going to use uh, that pattern for one of the inspiration pictures. And um, I've got the fabric here. It's a, a Liberty that I had in my stash, um, but I don't have enough elastic um, thread, which is what you use for shearing. So I ordered some from Wawa last night. It'll be here on Thursday, but I was kind of thinking um, when I make that dress, I will do a tutorial on how to do shearing um, cause I've just had a lot of people that have asked about that when I showed that dress. So that may be the tutorial that's in between. So once this swimsuit sew along is over, that may be the tutorial that's in between that one and the next sew along, um, which is going to be that sundress. I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head. It's a butterick. I'll pop a picture of it up here. <laughs> um, but I was going to, you know, line that bodice and stuff, the button down dress. Um, so yeah, I think that might be the tutorial that goes in between those. Um, so I will film that process as I'm making that dress. But anyway, long story short, I didn't think that anything, maybe the Brie dress, maybe, if I can get my act together <laughs> and just print the pattern off, um, on the computer. But, um, yeah, maybe, but I also didn't want to rush it. Like I want it to be, I mean, the whole point of this is to make, you know, nice garments, take my time, do it well. Um, so I don't really want to rush anything. So I think what I might do is just do some activewear sewing today <laughs> and try and finish off, uh, actually module three, um, because that the green that I've made all goes into module three. So I already have, um, actually quite a bit from module three. I basically, if I could do a, you know, finish the uh, two tops that I have cut out over there, which is the ruched tee from Ellie and Mac and also the uh, good sports tank from Ellie and Mac. Um, you know, I've had those cut out for a few days now. Um, and I think I need some um, binding or fold over elastic for the back of the um, good sports tank. But I think I might just use the scraps from the Oh, I bought the nylon swimsuiting fabric that I make leggings and stuff out of that's in a similar color. And I thought, well, I could just use that for the binding on those. Um, so anyway, I thought, well, maybe I'll go ahead, cut out those leggings as well that I want to make and everything else that I want to make with that fabric and get that sewn up today. Obviously, that'll all be the same thread color. 
um, and then maybe tomorrow get the constellation hoodie sewn up um, that is the navy blue sweatshirt that's going to go with that module and then just have a module lookbook on Friday of just module three what I've made from module three possibly so I'm going back and forth how would you guys like to see that or would it make more sense for me just to do like a video on the stride leggings for instance since most of my bottoms are all going to be the stride leggings and then do a video on um you know my toppers that I've made and then do a video on and maybe even separate videos on the toppers since those are jackets and they're a little bit more involved and then do a video on you know um did I say sports bras already? <laughs> on the sports bras that I've made, because I like to do a few different variations, and then a different video on all the different tops that I've made. And then at the end, um, you know, end of July, beginning of August, do like a full lookbook of here's the modules and here's what everything looks like in their module and then also together. So let me know. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, and if that's the case, I could do just a pattern review on Friday of like the transformer jacket where I can go in depth um, if you guys would like to see that so let me know <laughs> let me know but yeah I think I'm gonna do active wear sewing today so I'm gonna set you guys up I'm gonna go over and cut out um, see what I can get cut out of the nylon lycra for the the red the kind of off red color rust kind of color um, so yeah then I can just get all of my machines set up with that thread and we can get a sewing on that and well yeah so what do you yeah that's what I'm gonna do today <laughs> my son has a friend coming over this afternoon because they have a life group at their church um, that they're both in obviously they haven't met since you know beginning of March they've been doing zoom calls um, as a group but their life group leader has a pool at his house and so he is having a pool party this evening for the life group um, bless him that's like 10 13 year olds <laughs> boys <laughs> he's got a half at his house in his pool and he and his wife are empty nesters their kids are all like college and older so bless him that is that is quite <laughs> quite a commitment it's from like 6 30 to 9 i was like oh my gosh that's two and a half hours of mass mayhem bless them bless them so anyway um the kids will be somewhat entertained and my daughter entertains herself all the time anyway so yeah i think we can get some uh quite a bit of sewing done also before i just want to talk about how life-changing having extra batteries for my camera has been <laughs> i have not had to work around battery charging at all since i got these two new batteries so again thank you everyone that allowed that to be possible um yeah i'm just like in a rotation so um when this one gets low, I'll put the other one in, and then I've got like a constant rotation that I'm charging the ones that need to be charged. Um, so having three has been just wonderful. Um, it's really helped things. Okay, on that note, I'm gonna take you over to the cutting table and we're gonna cut out some leggings, possibly a sports bra, and then I need to look at my list of my plans. I really want to do, I think I may do the, um, the um, Elevate crop top, but not put the bra in it this time. Do a separate sports bra because I'm wondering if that, because it's a little bit stretchier, that material, um, if it won't be quite stretchier than the green that I made the sports bra out of. Um, so I just want to make sure that it is um, supportive enough. For, I mean, I have power mesh on the inside, obviously, but make sure it's supportive enough for my chest because I have some firmer um, fabrics that I think in the activewear module that I think might work better for an all-in-one, the crop top with a built-in bra, even for, for me. Um, so I'm basically putting the power sports bra into that Elevate crop top because um, the Elevate crop top also has a full bust front. Um, that is an option, so which I'll be using. <laughs> um, but I think that I, yeah. So I want to make the Elevate crop top first by itself. Um, where I'll just layer it over things and then tackle putting the bra into the Elevate crop top. So, um, yeah, let's go cut out. Okay, I'll quit babbling. <laughs>
Okay, so I have my, um, let's see, that's my Rouge Tea. That is my tank, the, um, oh gosh, the Good Sport tank. Then we've got my uh, crop top that's there, and then my sports bra back here, and then, sorry, 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 my leggings. And I'm doing the Capri length leggings this time, and I'm not doing the pocket. I'm doing just the straight sides. Um, I find actually that putting my phone in my pocket of the other pants I made pulls my pants down over time. <laughs> because the phone is heavy enough that, um, and I have very straight hips, that it just pulls my pants in over time. So, um, I'm not doing the pocket on this one. I may go back and do pockets on other ones, but for this one, we're going to eliminate. Okay, so I have my serger set up with dark gray thread, and then I've got the color. I only have one spool of thread that matches all of this stuff. Um, so I'm gonna have to get creative. I don't have my cover stitch set up yet, and I am gonna use my home sewing machine for some zigzag stitches. Um, but cover stitch is, well, it's not set up yet. I've just put the um, thread down. So then I will have, <clears throat> my cover stitch is the second machine you'll see me working on. I still have this set up for the last time I used it, so I will need to change the thread at some point. I do have a bobbin there, you can see, um, of that thread color, which will help with the cover stitching. Um, it's just, I mean, I may have to go back and forth with the thread from one machine to the other, which isn't awful. Not preferable, but not awful. And then my home sewing machine, um, I have a stretch needle in there already, but I will change the thread, have to change the thread on that as well. So this one little spool of thread is going to be playing a lot of parts. I only want to use the um, sewing machine. I'm going to sew elastic in <clears throat> a couple of places, and I want to use the three-step zigzag just because it's stretchier than the... Um, not necessarily the cover stitch machine, but when I do the chain stitch on the cover stitch. Because um, I did that last time. So, that's the plan. I have one, two, three, four, five things cut out. Can I get them all sewn today? We'll see. <laughs> okay, I'm going to set you up and uh, let you watch. Okay, before we start sewing, <laughs> I'm just putting this on record so that if things go horribly wrong here soon, um, you guys can say... I told you so. You should have listened to your gut. You should have stopped while you were ahead, because that might happen. So this morning, I had one of those mornings where you just wake up and you're just, you just really struggle, not only to get out of bed because you're tired, although I was just really, really tired. I'm having a lot of issues with my adrenals right now, so that could definitely be part of it. Like we're trying to figure out what's going on. They're just getting fried, basically. Um, so I know that's probably had a lot to do with it. So um, <laughs> anyway, I just struggled to get out of bed. Um, I was awake at like seven, but didn't like roll out of bed till close to eight. Um, yeah, it's just been one of those kind of mornings. And anyway, so I, Carrie, you've probably seen this cup in the background. It's a Tervis cup. Um, you know, it's just got owls on it, whatever. These cups don't sweat though. So they're perfect for carrying around the house. It carries like 20 to 24 ounces of water in it. Um, I can't remember which one off the top of my head. Um, but I carry water with me all the way throughout my house because of all my various health issues. It's very important that I drink an insane amount of water. And I do. <laughs> but I have learned from experience that um, this should not be near my sewing because I have dumped it on multiple occasions. And of course, water, when it equals with, um, when it attaches itself to tissue paper if you're working with a um, printed pattern and tissue paper it just disintegrates it I mean it's like toilet paper it just goes um, so I have since learned to keep my water away from my sewing machines um, I've learned it the hard way a couple of times but yeah so I had it sitting on the end of my um, industrial machine here because I'm not using this machine today but as I was getting things ready and threading my machine, I thought I better move this cup so that I don't dump it, accidentally hit it, or on, you know, onto the machines or whatever. And as I was picking it up, I went to put it on in a safe place away from me where I'd have to actually get up to go get a drink, tripped and threw water. Not just spilled it, threw an entire full one of these this way. So it went all over the industrial machine. Luckily, I think it mostly missed my um, serger. Although most of the stuff is mechanical, um, but it did miss, but I threw it. It's like my wall. 
Um, the thread got it over here. I mean, I'm, I still see water driplets that I missed. Not to mention it then ran down. I mean, it's all over the floor, of course. Um, so I just spent about you know, 20 minutes making sure that I got water cleaned up everywhere. I mean, I literally picked it up to move it to a safe place and tripped. <laughs> Had I left it where it was, I would have been fine. <laughs> so the moral of the story is, should I continue sewing today? Should I even attempt to sew or is it going to be one of those days? The only thing that's keeping me going is that I really just want to sew to sew today. I have had hardly any days in the recent, in like the past week, well really definitely the past week, where I've gotten to just sit and sew for fun. I have been sewing, but it's been, you know, sew along sewing. I did a pattern test, which are all fine. I just haven't had any just relaxation, recharge sewing, which is what this was going to be today. So I really would like to move ahead because I'm really in the mood to do some sewing. But I just wanted to go on record that if I, you know, who knows, if the gremlins attack today, I was warned. I was warned to step away from the machines and I'm choosing not to. So there we go. Here's to a better day. It is 106. Putting that on the end of my industrial machine. So it should be safe. <laughs> um, I may want to move it further though. I don't know. Uh, it's 106. I have five items of clothing that I would like to make. Um, the only thing I need to break for before bed tonight is to make my family dinner and to take my son and his friend to their um, life group pool party. So because my his friend's mom is picking them up afterwards tonight. So um, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see what I can get done. Um, I'll probably break and do a walk with my husband at some point. It, it's actually phenomenal outside. It's only 71 degrees outside right now and it's one, of, it's one, in, the, uh, one in the afternoon. So um, it's a perfect day for a walk. So we'll probably break and I'll probably take a walk with him. A nice long one. Um, but other than that, I'm going to sew. And these should be fairly quick because it's all knit. So here we go. Let's try this again. <laughs>
okay. Sorry, my camera's up a little high, but I'm gonna, I don't wanna adjust it again because I'm getting ready to show you guys what I made. So I finished um, a power sports bra with the uh, crisscross back straps. Um, here, we'll come back to this in a second. <clears throat> I finished the um, Ellie and Matt Good Sports Tank. I've not had a chance to finish the Rouge Tea, um, and I'll explain that in a second. But I finished that out of the Merino Poly Blend. I love that open back. Isn't that cute? Um, and I'll try this all on for you here in a second. Um, so I did four things. Oh, um, the bra, that. I got the um, crop top done. I actually haven't tried this on yet. Got the crop top all done, um, the Elevate crop top. And I did the stride <clears throat> leggings, and I did the capri length on these. No pocket. So just the straight um, stride leggings with the capri length cut. <laughs> Made it the same pattern that I used to make the green ones. Um, yeah, so I did not get to the Rouge Tea because I spent 872 hours trying to, there is um, bra elastic, bra strap elastic inside these um, straps for the bra because I was worried about having enough support with it just being strappy. And I've seen some people do just like fold over elastic and it looks so cute, but I mean, let's be honest, that's just not going to work for my girls. <laughs> so what I did was, you're supposed to fold the strips right sides together and then you sew or serge down the long edge. So when I did that, I put um, bra strapping, or strapping elastic, whatever you want to call it, um, on top. So it was strapping elastic, and then wrong side of the strap piece folded over, you know, wrong side, because they were, they were folded right sides together. And then I surged them. But turning those, oh my gosh. <laughs> I did find my um, loop turner. That thing I had bought and never used and could not find after I redid my sewing room. Found it today. But oh my gosh, my fingertips hurt so bad because I had to turn four of these. It took an hour, over an hour for me to turn, just to turn them. So anyway, <laughs> the roof tee did not get made, but I got four things made. Um, <clears throat> that's the back. I have tried the bra on. It looks really good. I mean, it looks very, it's the same fit as the, the green one, so I'm very pleased with that. So let me go try these on for you guys. Um, I also, you can see right there, there is my cedar dolman that I made last week. It was in the wash, and I didn't get a chance to show you guys, so I'll show you that one too. All right, hold on. Okay, so here's the bra, because I love you all. <laughs> here's the bra, it looks just the same as the other one from the front, but it has the cool strip crisscross back. Um, it fits really well. I mean, I feel really secure. I mean, everything feels um, really good. So now, I will put on, I made this one last week. So this is the Cashmere Cedar Dolman. Gidget, you're gonna get stepped on. Gidget. Hey, boop. <laughs> no interest at all in moving. Um, here, I'll put the camera down so you guys can see her. Are you going to get in film? She says hello. <laughs> Don't you? You're ready for dinner, aren't you? Okay, I feed you in just a second. Okay, Gidget says hello. Look at that, just staring at me. Like, why aren't you feeding me, crazy lady? Okay. So here, um, no, here are the leggings. Here are the leggings. I think that they fit really well. I like the capri length. Um, fits real nice. <laughs> I had an, a boo-boo on the leggings. If you can kind of see it, it looks like the fabric is different on the stripes here down the side. I accidentally sewed, so the right and wrong side look a lot alike on this fabric. And I, um, I'm not really sure which is the right and which is the wrong side. But anyway, I used the opposite side accidentally on my stripes. And so they're darker. I don't hate it. I think it's a fun, um, a really fun detail. It turned out, I mean, I was trying to really watch and make sure that wasn't happening, but yeah, I think I'm going to go with it. I think it turned into a really cute little detail. So those are the leggings. This is the Cedar Dolman um, that I made last week in the same, that Merino Poly um, 
fabric. I think it just looks really, I mean, it's just such an easy, nice and easy over shirt. Very pleased with that. All right, let me um, put on, let's see, what do I want to do next? I'll put on the uh, crop top real quick because I love you all. Uh, and then I'll show you the, uh, good or the good sports tank. Okay, so here's the Elevate crop on top of the, I mean, I will never wear this without a loose shirt over it unless some miraculously my, I get washboard apps, <laughs> which, hey, could happen. Probably not, but could. Um, but this is the Elevate crop top, and again, it's over the bra. I don't know. I think, so with my daughters, I made the ultra high rise. These are just the high rise. So the ultra high rise may come up just enough to where it would be just a little peekaboo. I don't know. I'm not comfortable showing this part of my stomach, but it does have potential and I could lengthen it. I could add, um, you know, an inch. I mean, an inch would pull it down to about there. Um, so I could do that. It fits fine in the back. It meets my pants fine in the back. It's just the front, which isn't surprising because of my, it has to go over my boobs. So anyway, there is that. Now let me show you the, um, good sports tank. All right. And here is the good sports tank. I actually think, um, I may do a petite adjustment on this one too. take an inch from here and add it to the bottom. Um, I mean, I know they're supposed to be big. Um, armholes in these tanks, but I don't think it's supposed to be quite, I mean, it feels like it fits better if it's like right there. So I think I'm going to take up an inch here, uh, probably in the back as well. And then, although I wouldn't have to, would I? Well, I probably will to keep it balanced. And then add the inch back to the bottom because I do like the length right there. But look at the back. I think that's a really cute, um, back and I love the way that these fabrics go together. It's very monochromatic. Um, but yeah, very pleased with all these new patterns that I've tried. So there we have it. Okay. So there you have it. There are the four new pieces that I made. And then the one that you didn't get to see last week, my uh, cedar dolman, which I really love. Um, Anyway, I think I am going to do the petite adjustment on both the Simplicity tank that you saw last week and this tank, um, and then just add it back to the bottom, because I do like the length that they are right now. Um, and I know that those armholes are supposed to be big, but um, just to take it up. I feel like my boobs are in, like, the upper chest part, so just hike it up a little bit. So I'm going to do that on both of those patterns, but I think that's the only adjustment. And then I think I may add an inch to the um, uh, crop, the Elevate crop top. Um, mostly because I do want to try making that with the built-in bra. It's a lot of layers wearing that over the bra. Um, so I think I am going to try and do the built-in bra in that. Um, and I think I'm going to try that kind of psychedelic print that I showed you that's like the greens and the blues. Um, I think that one might work. I need to check the stretch on that and make sure. Uh, but I think that might be a good contender. Or the navy blue that I've recently got, that might be a good contender too when I'm working with all the navy blue pieces. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really happy. I feel like this week I haven't really gotten that much sewing that I could show you done, mostly because I was working on a sew along and a pattern test. Um, but hopefully this week that will change. Um, I'm pretty much done with module one or three, except for the jacket. Um, I do need to get that Constellation hoodie um, sewn up. Uh, I think I'm going to do that one without the hood, though. So it's not really a hoodie. <laughs> you know what I mean? I am going to do the hood on the J. Lee pattern. So that is it for me for today. Um, let's see. Tomorrow I do have some filming to do. Um, and then we have dentist appointments. But um, after that, I would like to at least get the Rouge T finished. So then I can switch over the, the thread for the next thing. <laughs> um, I don't think I have anything else in this kind of rust color. Uh, it helped that I had two fabrics that were kind of in that same family. So now we can switch it over to the next and uh, maybe we'll do navy blue next. And then um, then I could get the Constellation hoodie sewn up and then um, the module one had um, navy pieces in it. So I'm excited about that playing around with um, 
with some more of the patterns. I want to make another spruce tank. I really like that one. <laughs> okay, so that's all I've got for today and for this week. I hope you've enjoyed following me around and I will see you guys again, um, well, tomorrow for the, for the vlog, um, but definitely this week for all the videos. I hope you guys have a, had a wonderful week and I will see you again soon. Bye.